Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, and this is the SOS Show with James Lodge Jr. And who am I? James Lodge Jr. Super Organizer. That's right, kids. Here on my JLJ Media. I'm also the JLJ of JLJ Media, so there. <laughs> uh, we are here back for another episode of this show that you guys love so much. Thanks, everybody, for listening and watching the show because it makes me happy. I came back a few weeks ago, taking a little break. Six years I've been doing this, the longest running thing I've ever done in entertainment. So thank you so much for making it a huge hit for me. This is like 350 episodes, like, so it's, it's, it's insane. Um, but I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Um, this is not easy work to do. Um, but I have a great guest, of course. She's been on before, it's been a while. Things, since she's been on, we've had a pandemic, or so we had, we're in a pandemic. Um, and we've talked outside of this, but actually let's bring her back on. Let's talk about, Something for folks, if you're a long time professional organizer, you may relate to some of the things we're talking about. I've been doing this work for almost 13 years. Um, and if you're a new organizer, this may be your future. So we're gonna talk about um, just kind of what it's like to be in business for a while, how the pandemic either changed things for us, all kinds of goodies. Um, help me welcome, she is a NAPO member, a certified professional organizer, and she is the founder, CEO, and organizer of Organize to Harmonize, Robin Reynolds. Hello, Robin. Hey, James, what's up? <laughs> the sky, the moon, and the stars. So um, I, I, do, I gotta do my thanks and gratitude, which I always do every episode. Um, and I wanna give thanks and gratitude to all my longtime clients. I just celebrated 11 years with a client off, you know, off and on. Wow. Uh, I love her so much. Um, I'm not gonna give her name, that's her business. But I love her so much, and she I'm her go-to person. Uh, and Rob may understand this also. We have people who are go-to people that I work with them all the time, but they come to me several times a year, sometimes seasonal, something at the last minute. Um, but I appreciate that so much that they think of me and that my work is worthy of notice. So I say thank you so much to them. I appreciate them so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Very much, right? So like if they think of me as their organizer or at least a go-to person to talk to. Um, that's kind of one of the things you want in this when you have your business, right? So I want to give thanks to them. I uh, also want to give some gratitude and some shout outs to three people. This is not organizing related, but the, each of them made an um, um, impression in my life. Um, one is Michael K. Williams, an actor who passed away a few days, not too long ago. Um, he was so amazing. If you've never seen The Wire, he gives one of the most complex, scary, Beautiful performances in the show I've ever seen in my entire life. He was also in Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country, you can say that five times fast. Um, great actor around my age, which makes you just kind of a little weird about that. Also, I want to give a shout out to, she to Sarah Dash, who passed away yesterday. Um, I knew people who knew her. She was part of LaBelle, and her, Sarah, her, Patty LaBelle, and uh, Nona Hendricks showed us that Black women can also do spaceship outfits and glamorous stuff and do rock infused R&B. Lady Marmalade, of course, is the big hit that you know, of, but they did lots of other songs too. And they showed us that black folks can be different things in music, not the way it was during the Motown era. So that's a shout out to her. And yesterday, another person, and they're like, he's around my age too. Willie Garson passed away and I love Sex in the City and I loved him at Stanford Blatch. And that was a, a nice little shock. There was kind of crazy to hear that. Um, so his son wrote a loving tribute to him on Instagram. Again, Sex and the City is a show I watched every single season. I saw both movies. It's coming back, actually, uh, without Samantha. That's one other story. Uh, but it's coming back. And, and so I wonder if he's filmed any scenes. I have no idea. But another loss to that kind of another show that changed the world also. So all three of those. But Michael K. Williams and Sarah Dash especially, they showed us that Black folks in entertainment can do all kinds of roles, can sing any kind of songs, that the talent isn't just about one little specific thing. So they moved the needle a little bit and showing us um, differently. So I'll make sure I say that. Uh, okay, welcome to the show, Robin, of course. I'm grateful for you, thankful for you. Um, so I have to ask you, I, I, I've been asking everybody this as I've been talking to them this year. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good, actually. Things are moving along really well. I'm going in, I'm trying to expand. So a lot of good stuff is happening. Good, that's great. Now the pandemic happened. It's still happening. But right. last year, I make some distinction. Last year was a little rougher because we had, especially in LA, we had a lot of lockdowns, uh, shutdowns and craziness. Um, when it first, for me, it was March 17th. That's just, that's a date that will live in infamy for me. Um, and where everything, Hollywood, both my career stopped. Hollywood stopped and organizing. 
Um, do you have a date or time of that year last year that you can remember that kind of changed things? Well, pretty much the same date because that's when we were literally in lockdown. We could not do anything. Anybody I had on the books canceled, you know, or I had to cancel them. So yep. it was just like, okay, sit around, twiddle your thumbs, you know? So for two months, I literally did not organize. I think I might've had one virtual organizing client. I don't do a lot of virtual. A lot of my clients, a lot of my my business is project-based. Most of it is project-based. So I can't go, you know, when it's that kind of, uh, when you run your business in that way, you know, when you're in a lockdown, it's people are not having you come in at all. You know, I think I might have done one thing, you know, when it was in a garage, so it wasn't even, you know, in the house and I was pretty much by myself the whole time. But for two months, there was nothing to do, really. You know, I kind of did, I created or was writing and doing some webinars, things of that nature, but nothing that was actually bringing in money. In that, I, I look back, we were talking about this now a little more sanely and calmly now, but I'm telling you, when it happened for me, and I'm not a, I'm not a, a panicker, I don't, I'm don't. pursuing panics easily or anything. Um, I'm a person who completely just, okay, I got to figure it out, right? Um, right. Yeah, but this was a situation that was a little weird for me. I felt very vulnerable. Now, I have no problem saying that to people out there. I've, and some of you may have felt the same way. Because I said I have two careers. So if one gets a little less, I have the other one to lean on to. If that one right. gets a little less, I have the other one. This one, I had neither. The studios I was working for shut down, um, and it, which affected everything else because then there were a lot of restaurants that shut down, and there were a lot of offices shut down to work from home. So, like, I mean, my, all, everything. In LA, especially everything. Look, when there's no traffic on the 405 at nine in the morning, <laughs> you are on lockdown. That's just plain and simple. I mean, right. quite frankly. And that's when you know pandemic is over. Oh my God, yes. Coming out of it, because the traffic starts again. Oh my goodness. You're you right. Get anywhere in the city in 20 minutes. I was just, I was just going to say that. So, if you're not from Los Angeles, people, the, the whole kind of joke thing is you get anywhere in 20 minutes. Now we know most of the time you can't do that in LA now, but during the pandemic last year, you could. Seriously. You seriously could. I didn't mind driving somewhere if I left the house. Um, so folks, for me, I didn't organize until January this year. So I didn't organize the rest of the year. Wow. Um, I uh, I have a compromised immune system. So I didn't even meet with people, nothing last year. I didn't see people. I actually stayed, I documented it. It's on my, one of my other shows here on GLG Media. I stayed home for 90 days, didn't see anybody. Um, wow. My doctor said, if I got it, I would die. So I said, that's all I know, got it. So I stayed home, locked down, didn't see my mother, nobody. We, everything was virtual. I was on this computer all the time. It was like, ha, ah, I didn't leave my yard. I didn't do nothing. So for 90 days. And then I tiptoed my way the rest of the year. Um, so I didn't do any organizing. So all my organizing is none of it's virtual. It's all like yours, project-based. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my clients are older, so I'm literally either physically organizing with them or doing it for them. It just wasn't feasible for, I didn't even look into any of that, but I if referred to people we know that do that. I referred some folks to, to that. I have no problem doing referrals. But for me, like I said I was vulnerable. I was like, this is the first time where it's out of my control. It's different when you lose a job, you go, I'll try to get another job, or you lose a client, I get another client. Like, this was like, there is nothing to get. And yeah, like, where do you go? What do you do? What do you do? So were you even worried about like, I mean, like money? Like we just worried about, because I know you have, you have a daughter, you have like, I mean, like, what, were you, like, what were you thinking kind of back then? You know what? I kind of wasn't worried because I had money in the bank. Okay, good. So that's just, that's just, everybody remember that, everybody. Everybody remember that. That's a good thing to, to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because there would have been times because, you know, I've been in business now for 13 years. And if this had happened earlier in my business, it would have been I would have panicked big time. But I didn't panic because I had money in the bank. So I had a cushion and, you know, I kind of just wrote it out to see what would happen. And, you know, since we were only on lockdown for two months, you know, a real lockdown where we yeah, couldn't do anything. Once we, you know, they released that, then I got ridiculously busy. 
I mean, I pretty much had my best year in business and I didn't even work for two months. That's good. Wow. Okay. So I don't I, I don't know how. I'm just grateful. I'm like, thank you, God, because yeah. I, you know, it just really made a big difference for me. And maybe oh. because I wasn't stressing, I don't know. But yeah, I, I just did yeah. my thinking. I'm sorry. I just shifted my thinking yeah. and how I would normally frame stuff. I want to talk, talk about that. That's what I get to right now. So, okay. So you go, okay. For me, I, I did other things and I made money last year, mostly all remotely. There, I made my money remotely. I write books. I mean, I do, t- I'm a weird person. I do 10,000 things. So I made money other, st- I made other streams. I made money. Right. But, but I want to find from you from, or since organizing is your business, right. um, did you sit down and go, okay, I got to figure this out. Now the lockdown is kind of lifted. The LA lockdown is lifted. Um, where you're like, I gotta buy sanitizer. But you're like, what was what was the thought process in the beginning when you start getting booked? You know what? I'm one of those weird people that I don't live in fear. I'm cautious, okay. but I don't live in fear. So of course, you know, in the beginning, it was gloves all the time. If I was in the supermarket getting my food or whatever, and you know, leaving the shoes outside. I mean, you hear all these crazy things of yes. what was happening. Yes. And, yes. You know, whatever. Yeah. But then as things started going, you know, going a little bit back to normal, not saying that I, um, and I guess actually in the beginning, we weren't wearing masks. So right. yeah, we weren't, remember we weren't. We weren't cautious being around people, you know, or who I was around, Yeah. you know, so I wasn't, you know, I had my little pod. I don't know. It's, it's interesting because I didn't really do very many things for precaution because I needed to work. You know, I needed to work. And like I said, I just don't live in fear because I know I had heard other people, they're wearing hazmat suits and they're wearing gloves and they're doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I can't live like that. I can't live like that. So I was just very cautious with what I did, but I still continued to do what I needed to do. And he said people, so people were calling up and said, okay, I'm ready to do this. How were they in, in your consultations or, or, or setting up? Were they saying anything to you? Yeah, they were just asking, you know, are you working more so? You know, I had a lot of moves oh, with wow. um, things that were kind of already in process. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, like people had already planned and it's just like, this is the time that it happened. You know, like I had a declutter a client, they were moving to England. You know, so that took weeks and weeks, you know, between that process. And then they ended up left and leaving. And then it was like, okay, here's the keys. Please handle the rest. Okay. You know, because they needed to go because they had a weird situation. They had to get whatever they needed to get to London since they were actually moving because people weren't really being allowed to travel. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. So they had their own stuff they had to deal with, you know, so... I had to handle things on this end for them. Then I had another client that was in the middle of a remodel. The house was finally done. So now I had to move her and, and get her unpacked. You know, so it was just a lot of things that had already been in process. It wasn't that, you know, like, because everybody, when I tell them I was so busy, they're like, oh, well, people were home. They were organizing. I'm like, no, they weren't calling me. They were doing it themselves. Yeah, no, yeah, right. <laughs> like I had a lot more, um, even closet design. I was doing more of that. People wanted to do projects. They were doing projects in their house. And it's like, oh, okay, well now it's time for me to do my closet. Let's call Robin and have her come in and do my closet. You know, so it was just, you know, the work that was coming was a little bit different or more so of things that I could, um, that were bigger projects than things that, you know, happened necessarily in the past. But it was just, ironically fell during a year of a pandemic. Yeah, that's why for me, it was, um, I, as I started, I started tipping my toe. I went to my first um, set. I did, let's make it, I did, let's make a deal as a dress as a taco. So that was my first, that. That, yeah, so that was my first set in Hollywood. Um, that was in December. And I remember, um, the same day I got that gig, I have to laugh. I, just, I have to laugh because a friend of mine is going, on, let's make a deal next week. And he's like, I, why can't I be a taco like you? I'm like, it's already been done. Um, yeah. Only one black taco per season. No. Um, 
But I said, uh, I got a job. my first client, an older client called me and said, hi, I know it's been like nine months. Are you organizing? And I think they were one of the first ones to get vaccinated. They were, they were super, I want to say super old. They were just old. They were older. Um, <laughs> I was say that. They were super old. No, they were older. I was like that. And so I was like, it's so interesting. Like both my worlds, like that same day, I got two different calls for each. It was kind of like, that was, I mean, God's hilarious sometimes. Um, and and for me, I was like, okay, well, you know, I know who you are. Like you, I was like, I, I, I'm not a panicker. I'm not one who is a panicker, but I was like, you know what? I, you know, I'm very, I, I didn't get sick at all. I've gotten sick this whole year and a half. Like, I haven't gotten a cold. I haven't gotten nothing. I mean, I've been so, I guess, so good about this and take care and take care of myself, just taking my vitamins and take care of myself. And, uh, but, but I said, okay, I think I feel safe with you. And you're right. It wasn't the usual organizing job. It was like, I'm going back to some side jobs she does. And was like, I need you to help me organize the, the products. Like, oh, I've done that a long time. Well, that's interesting. And so since then, Robin, almost like to you, my jobs this year have been people going back to work, actually. And they have situations where I got to set up their garages. I, I've done four garages in the last like six months. It's been crazy. And, it's, and I'm just cleaning them out and organizing them with all of their one's a hair person in Hollywood, uh, one um, does promotions and all. So it's like, it was really like literally getting their the scripts in order. And I was, it's, it's really funny. It wasn't like the usual, like you said, organizing, clean out. It was, it was mostly like, let's get ready and set up. I'm getting back to my life right. kind of situation. So that was kind of mine too this year. I was like, I'm having a really good year this year. Um, but it's just kind of like, that's interesting. It, was, it wasn't the usual calls that I get. It wasn't that I'm sitting at home and I hate my stuff. I mean, I'm sure folks get that. I didn't get that. I didn't get those. I didn't get those calls. Like I need my living room to take care. No, I didn't get that call. It was the calls were more like I'm downsizing. I have two people who are downsizing right now, moving, so I'm doing that. So it's like it's been very much that kind of stuff. But a lot of it was I'm going back to work. I gotta find all my crap. Where is all my stuff? Where is all my? Where am I? Where am I? Where are my my uh my shears and where are my you know wigs and we were doing, I did wigs with a client. We were doing wigs for the last three weeks. I love it. It was, it was like and, oh that's hysterical. And, you know, it is, and I always try a wig on. How it. many wigs could you have? Oh, well, I can tell you how many weeks you have. Yes. Um, but I mean, and, and, you know, but it's been very interesting. You're right. It's been a, it's been a different type of clientele. Yeah. Clientele needs than it was. Yeah. Normally. So I, I, I love the way you said that. It's like, it's very, just very different. Yeah. I didn't get those calls. You're like, I'm sitting in my house and I hate it. Can you help me? I didn't get those calls. It was more like major time sensitive. That's like, that's what I was looking for. Right. Time sensitive issues. It's like you had the same thing. You had time sensitive issues. Yeah, because just their life was happening and they needed this help or that help or whatever. Yeah, that's really So, I mean, you and I started around the same time and we started during, I started during a recession. So I was like, I remember I started, you're like, they thought it was crazy talk because I was leaving a cushy job and they're like, it's 2008, what are, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm leaving everything, bitches. I was, I was ready to go uh, <laughs> from my home. Uh, again, obviously you and I are feel for fear folks. We did it, we're still here. Um, when you, actually, when you started, was there any, did anybody say to you, like, what are you doing? It's like, it's the wrong time of the year. Did they say anything, say anything to you like that? I never, I've never no, because I actually started my business when I was working full time. Okay. that's okay. Um, But it was during the recession. Yeah. And so I just, I didn't even know this was a profession. Like, I right. think I read an article and they had Napo mentioned it. And I was like, oh, my God, I want to do that. I had no clue how to start a business. That was never something on my radar that I was ever going to do. <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh, uh, duh, 13 years later, here we are. Yes. But um, so then once I started my business, I'd probably say within six months, I ended up getting uh, uh, laid off from my job Okay, that's right. okay. Uh, because it was the recession. And so when I got laid off, I tried looking for another job and there were no jobs for me. I had been a personal assistant for many years before that. Yeah. And there were no personal assistant jobs. Agencies had closed. They were, you know, and I was like, okay, when the super wealthy aren't hiring, there's a problem. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I just put all my energy into starting my business yeah. and that's what I did. And, you know, trickled along, getting clients, doing what I had to do. And then boom, here we are. And, you know, the time goes by really fast because I can't believe that it's been, that I've been doing this solely for 13 years. Like that just seems crazy to me. 
I agree. I, I feel like, you know, you start something and you're so busy in it. So yes. I don't people know this. You're setting it up. You're busy in it. So you're busy trying to book the next client, trying to market yourself, trying to get out there, doing the job, make sure it's good. I mean, there's a, there's a lot. And then also life. You have life going on too. Either you're raising a child or you're taking care of the grandkids or you take care of your mom or like there's just stuff going on and there's living life. Um, it's so people ask me, well, in the beginning, did you think, but there were a lot of things I didn't think about because I was so busy just in it trying to forge forward. Right. Yeah. It wasn't until maybe midway through I started to really sit down and start really thinking of the business. But in the beginning, it was just like, oh yeah, I'm just going. I'm going. I got. I got jobs. I got things I got to do. I got to make this. You know, I got a job tomorrow. I'm just on Thursday, and you know, I'm, I'm just exactly, like exactly because you got bills to pay. So you're like, it. how is the money coming in? How's it Back coming in? What you're looking at? But I'm asking because you and I both said the same thing. We didn't know this was a business. I mean, like, I mean, when you started, I mean, was there any expectations or anything you had? You're thinking. I mean, what, were you thinking anything back then? I wasn't thinking anything back then, and I probably wasn't until maybe the pandemic or even a little bit before that thinking anything then. It was always just, you know, let me get, I have bills to pay. Where's my next client? Where's the next check coming? Where's, you know, that's, you know, because as a single parent too, like I'm always hustling because it's not just me. I have a human I have to take care of and provide for. You know, I don't have family. All of my family is deceased, so I don't get help. If I don't do it, who's going to do it? So it was always just a hustle to get the next client, to get the next client, to get the next, you know, to get the money coming in. It wasn't until fairly recently that I started thinking about the, my business as a business. And now, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. Now, how are we going to expand? What are we going to do here? you know, that I'm thinking of it in a more, um, and probably because I'm also getting older, how, I, you know, because there are days that the physical work is just like, it's Ooh. too much. Ooh. I get home and my couch becomes one. Like, I just, you know, we just melt, <laughs> I melt into that couch because my back is spent, yeah. you know? So it's like, well, what can I do going forward? You know, because I can't be doing this in another 10 years as far as all the physical labor. So let's take on a team. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know, let's figure it out so that money is still coming in and I'm still running the business, but the other people are doing the work. Everything you're saying, I try to totally relate. Um, but I think for people who are newer to this, and if, you're, and if you're younger doing this, I feel like you should take this advice now. Look at your business long term. Look at your look at your look at your age. You don't, you don't tell anybody who you are, what age you are, folks out there. But look at your you know how old you are. Look at your age. Look at your physical status. Your health. And look at all because this does this. I mean, I've said there are times my feet are hurting. There are parts of my body that hurt. And I'm like, how did that hurt? Like, I, what did I do to hurt that? I mean, I didn't even know that even hurt. I mean, where that muscle come from? Um, that just happened just naturally because you you know you get a older. Um, uh, it's it's a lot of work, and not saying you can't organize until your 60s or 70s. I mean, you could probably do that. But I'm just saying that I just wonder. You just take stock in who you are, honestly. And where do you want to go? I think you should do I think you should learn it now. We're telling you this now because we're 10, 11, 12 years into the business. I feel like you should listen to it now and go, yeah, where do I want to be at 50 or 60 or even 70? Where do I want to be in terms of my business? Um, physically, professionally, everything, mentally. Because the thing is that you have to decide for yourself where what you want to do. If you want to always be hands-on, then that's great. Do yeah. you want to lead a team? Do you want to you know, be virtual where you can do it from anywhere or at any time for as long as you want, you know, you just have to, but I think when we start our businesses, we're so hell bent on just making money that we're not thinking long-term or what this could be or how it could evolve. And I also, I think, because you just don't know, you don't know what it can be or what it can evolve to. You have to create that for yourself. Fair. I mean, I've done things that, you know, I used to do estate sales for years. That's not something that's typically within what organizers do, but that was something that I did. Yeah. You know, I do custom closet design. That's not something typically that organizers do, but I have put that into my business. So you create it how you want it to be, whatever that looks like. 
It's so true. When I first started, I did concierge services during the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd help you go shopping or go shopping for you. Uh, you give me a list. Uh, a lot of holiday parties, a lot of things. Like when I would help get all the stuff to get, help you organize all that, help you organize your menus for your for your dinners. I used to do that. I don't do that anymore, but I used to do that. Um, then at one point, um, I was doing a lot of um, so I was there was those the parties thing, the concierge service. Um, oh, I do a lot of inventory for small businesses. I come in do the inventory because I because when I used to work in business, you would hire firms or send all these people out and have these little machines and everything. Um, that's just, it's, it's very expensive folks. Um, so a lot of small businesses, I did two, they told two friends and then they told two friends, no joke. <laughs> so on and so on. If you're old enough, you know, that you know that commercial, <laughs> um, I think it was ball of Boston or something, one of those commercials. Um, but anyway, but that was, it got word of mouth, which again, word of mouth folks, word of mouth is a good thing. Um, but they, uh, they started saying I could go to small businesses and do the inventory and back and it didn't cost a lot of money. I mean, what I charged was. Just, I mean, I charge my my I charge, but it wasn't as bad as like trying to get a big firm for this small. Right. The fit was better too because you can trust me. I'm in there, um, and it, and I did that for a while, which I still can do that. People want me to do inventory, I can still do that. Uh, but you're right, you start creating. That's the great thing about organizing. Organizing is a vast, broad industry. Right. So many of our friends and colleagues do so many different kinds of things under the umbrella and purview of organization. Mm-hmm. And disorder and this, and there's just so many things you can do. Um, it literally, it's your imagination almost. It's up, it's kind of up to you to go. Okay, uh, again, think of your business. What do you like to do? I love, I love inventory. I mean, I kind of love counting things. I love, I love the kind of stuff. So why not? So why not offer that to people? Right. Say, that's fun for me. I like, I'm good at it. I like doing it. So then, make that part of your business. You know, you know what I mean? Like, why do things you don't want to do? Like, do things you want to do? Exactly. Uh, you know, so, I, so everything you're saying, I agree with. I think people need to look at their business and go, what can I do for you? Like you see a business, what can I do for you that's in the realm of organization? And you may see a job sitting right there in front of you that you didn't realize was there. Absolutely. I think that's it. Um, so you said recently is when you first, when you started realizing you had a business. It took me about 10 years before I realized like, I actually have a business and that's that's about 10 years. Yeah, I would say probably like two years ago. So that probably would have been like about the 11 year mark. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe I guess this is a business, like it's a business, not just something I do to make money, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. No, glad you said that. I Say say that one more time, please. I like that. Say that one more time. What did I say? It's a business. (laughs) I realized it's a business and not just something I do to make money. I love that. Yeah. That's important, folks. That's an important statement. I love that statement. Wait, where's my bell? Get the bell, <laughs> bell on that one. No, that's seriously, that's because God bless some of these folks that I talk to sometimes. They come to me for a question of things. And it's treated as a hobby sometimes. Or they've treated so like it's just well, you know, like it's kind of like, oh my God, like totally. And it's like, but I mean, it's you gotta find a way at some point to realize what is this? And what is this to you? What is this to you personally? What is this to you? Right. Is it your career. Yeah. But see, that's, but the difference is, I think, because it's, you know, we don't go to an office. We don't, you know, there's literally no startup costs, you know, because you can create a website yourself, you know, a couple of bucks for business cards or whatever. There's no startup costs. So there's nothing that really says you don't necessarily need a license from the city even. You know, you can literally just say, I'm an organizer, which let's face it, many people have done. <laughs> I sit my tea on that one. Yes, yes, that, that, that's, that's true, that's true. I don't, I mean, yep. That's you know, true. and then just go and do it. So it's not really viewed as a job, as a career, you know, but when it's the only thing that you do. And even for, you know, when I first started out, as I said, I was working full time. So it was starting out. I had to start somewhere, but I wanted to start. I didn't want to just quit my job and start, you know, but I had to start somewhere, but it wasn't, I knew that it wanted, I wanted it to be my main source of income. It just became that a little bit sooner than I anticipated because I got laid off, (laughs) but you know, which everything it has is happens for a reason. And it was an absolute blessing why it did happen. 
yeah, or nice. when it happened. So I am extremely grateful. Yeah. Um, which sounds weird to be laid off. Yeah, I know. I don't get my notes to be here. But in you. hindsight, you know, at the time I'm devastated because I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to feed? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, yes, yes. I, everything, I, you know, it's, it, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. No, no, it's fine. No, they, they have it for a reason. But no, that's because I, I want to I ask you, I mean, like, like, I always like you said, you said a statement earlier that I agree with. I always thought this was for somebody else. Entrepreneurship's not, I mean, for me now, I'm like, oh, well, I'm like, I'm the person who gets a job, I get hired, I do a good job there, I move up the ladder, and I'll retire at 67 or whatever, 65. That was, that's what I thought my life was going to be. Now that I'm doing this for so I'm like, why did I think that way? I'm like, I'm totally built for this. Um, in your opinion, now you've been doing it for 13 years, almost 13 years. Do you think this is for everybody? Or do you think it takes a certain type of person to do entrepreneurship and organizing? Well, which part are you asking me? Owning their own business or being an organizer? Owning their own business. We're talking about that whole thing, but because it's, yeah, being an organizer is one thing, but owning your own business and, and organizing, do you think it's, I mean, do you think it's for, I mean, what do you think? I mean, I don't think everything is for everyone, right. no matter what it is. Right. Because you have to have the, the drive, you have to have the, the wherewithal to hustle. I mean, because it is always a hustle to get the next client, whether you're networking, whether you're, you know, sending out newsletters and emails and whatever, you're always hustling to get the next client. You know, I think there are very few of us that has a phone ringing off the hook all day long. You know, I just don't think that happens, you know, to for most of us. So it's always a hustle. So it's like, what are you going to do? So if you're not the person that is going to always hustle, then owning a business is probably, or owning a business that isn't, you know, a storefront or where people are just walking in, especially a service business. Because yeah, yeah. a service business that doesn't have a storefront is very different than uh, somebody with a storefront or a product that they're selling. You know, it's just very different. So everything is not for everyone. And even being an organizer, I mean, obviously you have to know how to organize, but there are things that you can, you know, there are numerous classes on APO that you can take in order to learn things, but still it's not for everyone. I've seen colleagues, you know, doing, working with clients and no one I would ever refer. Yeah. It's, 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 it's for me, it's been the, I don't know if you had this happen to you at all, but coming in after somebody. I hired this person and and it just didn't work out. They showed me what they made. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I come in. I've had a few of those. Not, I haven't had so much that. I've had where um, others have brought me in when I was doing estate sales and I've seen them working with clients. And I'm like, hmm, that's harsh in my head. I'm thinking, you know, we're just working with other organizers. And I'm like, hmm, that's just not the way I would have done that. Or why are you doing it this way or whatever? You know, so it's just interesting. And I mean, again, it's basically because our brains all work differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to see different things. And sometimes, you know, you learn something also from somebody else. Because I'm not adverse to learning anything either, you know, because, you know, what do they say when you stop learning, you die? Like you learn something it all time. every day. I say it all the time. When the education stops, my mouth just put me in the coffin because that's, I learn from my clients. I learn from other organizers. I learn from tele, I learn from everything. Yes. I learn from everything. Seriously. I, learn, I don't, I don't know everything. I tell you, I don't know everything. Um, and sometimes because every person is so different, every situation is so different. Every space is so different. You learn something new in that. Absolutely. Because, you know, people always say, well, how do you do? What do you do? You know, it's like as if there's one blanket system that you use when you work with a client. And I'm like, no, there isn't. Everything has to be tailored to you because this is your brain, your home, your household with people. So there's no blanket system to do anything. I agree with that. I always do the whole thing. I go, okay, we're filing something. I always say, how would you remember it? Exactly. Because how I might remember it is going to be very different than how you might remember it. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling, oh, I, I, I said, I'll make you think two clients. And I, I'm not just sitting here, I'm just sitting here. This is when I leave. <laughs> this, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you something. And this is a, it's a little, it's a little inside um, organizing thing. And again, I love my clients to death. But there'll be times when three months later, I get a phone call. I've been to the house in three months. Where are those scissors we put? Those scissors. 
Uh-huh. I don't remember what we were those scissors. And three months later, the day later, I probably remember, but three months later, I brain dump. I mean, I don't have I don't I know. what's going on. Honey, and you're so lucky if I remember a week later because <laughs> in between there's been, you know, more clients. Right. More stuff or right. Whatever. So for me, the whole purpose of that is to say that I want people to have things in places where they will know where it is. Absolutely. Not where I think they should have it. It's like, no. no I always say we we can make suggestions. I can make a suggestion, but if it, it has to work for you. So if that suggestion doesn't work, then we'll go on to plan B. Because yeah. you have to remember where it is, how it goes, whatever. It's got to work for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What is one thing you learned about yourself as a business owner in the last year or so? Oh, in the last year or so? Yeah, because of the pandemic, it's like, what, is, I, what have you learned? Like, you're like, oh, okay. You're like, okay, that's interesting about myself. That I can do more than I think that, than I thought I could. Oh, please explain. Um, ugh. okay. Well, in the, in the last year, as I mentioned, I've been super busy really busy. Um, you know, there were a couple of weeks of kind of down, but overall, very, very busy. There were, I ended up hiring employees. So now I'm actually a boss, uh, which is something that I never really anticipated or thought that I would do. You know, it was so much easier having subs, but <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, definitely. I understand that. I understand that. Can't do that anymore. Um, I have also been asked to be the um, next president of the BCPO, which I'm like, you know, it's kind of that imposter syndrome thing. Like, why do you want me? Me? Me do it. You know, like people have faith in me that I don't necessarily have faith in me about <laughs> things. I'm like, and, and for those that don't know, it's the board of certif uh, certifying professional organizers. Um, folks, so, she's, folks, she's qualified. She's smart and everything. She's qualified. Don't, don't let her fool you. She's good. She's good. It's a I, lot more than I thought it was going to be. Let's put it <laughs> my term hasn't even started until May. So, Dang. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. But, you know, so it's just things like that, you know, and I'm also expanding into a new territory as well. Okay. So I'm splitting my time or not splitting my time, but I'm making more uh, excursions out into that area so I can start building up that, that area and get business out there. Yeah, okay. So, you know, it's like I put a lot on my plate, but I realized that I can handle it too, you know, cause it, I don't know. I just, I make the time to do the things that I want to do. You know, I guess that's kind of it. You know, in the midst of, I also have to, my daughter's a senior this year, so we're dealing with all this college stuff, which is a uh, pain in the royal took us. I remember. I remember that. Oh, yeah. I remember that. So I don't even know, uh, yeah. you know, so that's a whole other thing. So it's just, it's taking on a lot, and I just, I, I'm handling it. I'm doing it. You know, and I'm realizing that, you know, what do they say? God doesn't give you any more than you can handle. Right. Well, okay. you know, well, but you then know. sometimes you're like, okay, I got it. Enough. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. We're fine. We're fine. We're exactly. full. That's I'm, okay. Stop. Yes. I'm full. <laughs> it looks delicious, but I'm full. Thank you. Exactly. Um, Unless you throw me the winning lotto numbers, numbers enough. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. No, I, I get it. And, and the thing is, you know, and I, I mean, because now, you know, now we're entering our, you know, second, you know, now we're past the 10 year mark. Now we're going into like the fifth, going towards 15 and heading yeah. towards you know, that kind of thing. Um, and for me, I have grandchildren. So I'm like, I'm trying to be there for the grandkids. I have that extra added thing. I have a new grandbaby. I'm totally in love with little Trenton, who's four months old. I'm oh. in love with him completely. In love. I'm getting pictures every day for my daughter. I'm in love with him. Um, so this, so it's really funny because, so I have, like you said, I have this business I'm, I'm, try to evolve and change. I have two businesses. I'll try to evolve and change. But then I want to see them. I want to see my babies. I want to be around my, you know, my nieces and nephews and be there for my mother and make just have my aging parents. I'm I'm part of that sandwich generation they call it. I have the aging parents and I have the kids and grandkids. So all that. Um haven't been on a date since the pandemic. So I will forget about that for a second. 
Um, but you're right. It's about making time to do things you want to do. I think that's very important for people out there who are entrepreneurs, professional organizers, anybody out there. You, you will, if you want it, you will make time for it. Yeah. And if it's, if it's a job you want uh, or be there for your child or be there for your friends or whatever it is, we have to stop putting limitations on ourselves and saying, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm too this. I'm too that. Stop saying all that. And really, and really take time to look at your schedule, look at what's going on in your life and find out what can be done. I mean, trust me, I do it all the time. Do you go to the bathroom every day? Yes. Do you brush your teeth every day? Yeah. I mean, you can, you can find time. You find time to do that. You get, you, you eat. I mean, well, most people eat. Some, some people don't, but most people eat. You find time for that. You know, you want to go see a movie, you find time for that. You know I mean? It's like, it almost like talking to your own clients sometimes. I'm like, do you watch half hour comedies? Well, 30 minutes, you can do something while you're watching that. Like, it's almost like talking to right. your clients. We have, we have to talk to ourselves that way sometimes too. I'd remind us that, you know, because I, you know, I love this industry. You know that I love this industry so much. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> I do what I can talk about it to the world out there. Um, I think we just, we do, we do God's work. We do a service that I say it all the time. People can tell me if I'm wrong or not. We're one of the few industries that everyone of all ages can use us. Absolutely. From child to person who's not a child. I'll put it that way. Um, all genders, all sexual orientations, it crosses race, it crosses demographic. It is, it's just, there's something, we can do something for everybody. So I feel like if you're an organizer watching this and you're a business, whether you're long, long time or newer, just know your work is, is needed. It's needed. They need us out there. They need us out there. They just, they just, they just, I, just I believe with all my heart, they need us out there. They Absolutely. Do. Um, I, for me, I learned that I can roll with the punches. I mean, I uh, starting during a recession, I had that lost year of my Bell's palsy. And then this recession, I was like, the recession, I was like, okay, well, another thing, I could do this. Um, and I think, I think if people take away anything from this from us, is to not panic. Panicking doesn't help anything really. Feeling your emotions about something, you should feel the emotions. So I'm not saying don't do that, of course. But just take a step back and assess like we do in organizing clients, right? I was just going to say, because the bottom line is it's, you just have to figure out a solution, you know, the same way that we do with our clients. Like they have a problem, we're figuring out the solution. So, you know, when stuff happens in the world, in our business and whatever, we just have to, like you said, panicking doesn't help. We just have to figure out a solution. Okay. This happened. So how are we going to fix it? And that's really what it is. You know, I mean, we're a fixer. You know, if you go back to scandal days with Olivia Pope, she was yeah. a fixer. You know, we're fixers just in a different way. Yeah. You know, whether we're fixing our own businesses and how it's going to succeed or how we're going to do things or whether we're fixing things for our clients, it's the same thing. You know, we're just fixing. It's, it's problem solving. We yeah. are problem. What's an organizer? A problem solver. I agree with that completely. And of course, I can't not, not talk about this because we are, as we, you know, as we're wrapping this up a little bit, we're both black. If you can't see that, folks, if you're listening to us, we're black. <laughs> African-American, black, Negro, whatever you want to call it. Wait, let me look. Oh, my God. I'm like, goodness, <laughs> stop yourself. If you didn't know I am. If you didn't know. It's kind of crazy. So is my mom. No. Um, so is my dad. No. Um, so also my kids. No. Uh, but no, um, we are. And so it's also been a very long year about racial equality, too. But I always feel like, and you and I talked about this off, off mic and off camera, it, it's never gone away. It's never gone away or, come, I mean, it's always just been here for us. I mean, I just feel like anybody right. brown knows, anybody brown, anybody women, we know these, these, these things have been, been, been just never went away. Just now they're getting heightened attention um, and deservedly so, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just want to ask you a little bit just about your thoughts on being a professional or organizer. I, I, I'm phrasing this a certain way on purpose. A professional organizer who happens to be Black. Is there anything you would like to say on that for anybody who's watching? Because I have a lot of Black professional organizers who watch the show. I'm just kind of curious if anything you want to say right. about that. Well, you know, I find it interesting because in addition to the pandemic, we also had the whole start of the Black Lives Matter movement last year, yes. last yes. summer, where it was, you know, at a the peak of everything. Oh, after I know. That, oh, I know. I got a lot of people after that. that yeah. I found that I have had clients that are specifically searching out an organizer that is black because they want to support 
not just a woman owned business, but a black owned business. Me too. So I, you know, I found that to be very interesting and very hopeful as well, you know, because as we both know, you know, your color can sometimes work against you at times that it seems now is a, it's at a point that it can work for you, that people are actively uh, looking to support, you know, black owned businesses. That's because true. I, yeah. Whether they knew before or not, they realize now that there is a disparity and there is um, there isn't that same equality that people, you know, we're getting that other people are getting, whether it's organizing or any other business. You know, and you know, I saw it on you know my next door. People wanted to know where the black-owned restaurants are. People wanted to know the black-owned businesses. People, I mean, people were out looking. They really wanted to be a part of helping the problem or helping create a solution by supporting. So I just found that to be very, very interesting. And even still, people are still searching for, you know, whether it's other Black people or uh, um, just white counterparts that they want to support a Black business. It's so, true. I, I will, I'll piggyback off that. I want to say that I found that it was um, a lot of Black folks contacted me, didn't know that they could do it, that organizing could be for Black people. That's why I got this last year. They didn't know it was a service. Thing. They know it's a service that they could even have. And some of them are like, so you do what? Like I had to educate a lot of black people on what organizers do. It was very interesting. They, they knew what they know what housekeepers do, they know what plumbers do, like all that stuff. And I'd explain to someone that on the camera, I'm not a housekeeper. Um, and your house, and they're, and they're telling me, yeah, my housekeeper cannot organize, like they're not organizers. Exactly. So I, I, like, so I had to like really uh, help educate and bring awareness because not even some of my clients right now are black actually, here in South LA. I live in Inglewood, so they're in South LA, Baldwin Hills, View Park, the Park, they're all here. I love my clients to death. But a lot of them are new, because like, they just, they didn't, they didn't even know. So they were right. secretly heard about organizing. I did, I had a couple of viral moments, as we know, this last year. So I got my, my when I went on Jimmy Kimmel, I got a lot of attention from black people going, oh, you're an organizer. Oh my goodness, can I hire you? What's going on? Like, what do you, what is that again? What do you do? And so for me, it was the, the beauty of connecting with our community um, and saying, yeah, there are organizers and some of us are black and so and, and some are white who are great also who support black people. Like it's like, it's just, it's, right. it, the profession was newer to them. They weren't watching Marie Kondo. They weren't watching the home edit. They weren't watching those shows. They right. may know of Hoarders, of course, because they've heard of that, of course, or our, um, our girl, A Clean House back in the day. They know if they know a few right. of those, but I had a lot, I would say 80% of my newer clients in the last year that I got are black and are new to this industry. Like they didn't know it was a thing. And they're so happy. They're telling all their friends like, oh my God, I got this guy. He's, he's like, oh my God. They, they just think it's, it's, so for me, it was very satisfying for me because they just didn't. So it told me as a business owner, what was I not doing enough of? Cause I mean, maybe I wasn't reaching out enough to that audience enough to get that out because I'm thinking, yeah, I live in the community. What, what am I not doing enough? I mean, I, I saw, so it was a great eye opening experience for me. But I also find it is a, you know, like you said, they're not watching necessarily the organizing shows. So it's sometimes just a difference between what people are paying attention to or what they are, because it's not like the shows are only on certain networks. No, I don't know. Only get it in certain areas or whatever. It's just what they are more interested in or a group of people, what they're interested in, as opposed to everything that is available to them. Yeah. You know, because the same thing could be said that people don't know maybe that you can get a colonic. I mean, I'm just throwing it out. I don't write nobody. Not that I've ever gone for one, but it's just either. a random thing that people may not know what it is that you, you know, the health benefits or whatever. But I think more and more, all communities are learning about things that are not necessarily in mainstream or the norm that now, oh, hey, I could do that and I need that and I could, you know, hire that and whatever. So the different things I think are coming out to the forefront now because people are just educating themselves more about certain things and alternative ways to do things, I guess I should say. 
That's a good way of putting it. I like that. And that's and that's what we want. And this is, I, mean, I can talk to you forever, of course. This is a great, I think it's a great conversation. Thank you so much for your time. I think- Oh, absolutely. I think people should watch this, whether all races, colors, men, women, everybody should watch this episode because I think it's a great business episode to talk about because we talk about, even though we're talking about organizing, there are a lot of things where entrepreneurs can learn and, or at least see if they can relate to um, during this. I think it's just such a, it's our job to give back to the community. And I think you, you do that, Robin. So, and I, and I, you know, you're my friend and, you know, I love you. Thank I you. think you are bright and your twin daughter, um, you're a bright <laughs> light. Um, so I, I'm so glad you, you decided to, you have to come back on. Um, tell folks where they can find your business. Well, you can find me on Instagram at organize to harmonize and that's the number two. And my website is also organized to harmonize.com. So reach out either way. Be happy to talk to you and help you out in any way possible. Yeah, check her out, folks. See what she's doing and see if she can help you out. I mean, she's good. So talk to her. Um, and of course, I'm at a lot of help.com, super organizers, all over the place. Just you can Google me, I'm everywhere. Um, and somebody did ask me the other day, my Jimmy Kimmel episode that I was on was um, episode, it was May 12th, 2021. It's on Hulu, ABC.com. You can see me talk about being an organizer. I said I'm a professional organizer. We talk about it. I'm I know sure. it's odd. It was awesome. It changed, it changed my life. It did change my life, I, I have to say. Um, and so I, I'm very thankful to Jimmy Kimmel and the, and the family there. They treat me like family all the time. So I may awesome. be back. You never know. There's things going on. So, you know, and I made history, so you never know. But uh, I'm very proud of this profession so much. I love all my colleagues. I love this. I love the work that we're doing. It's very important work. The world needs us, folks. They need us. So seek us Absolutely. out. Seek us out all over the country. If you need any questions, you can always contact me um, on any social media and I will get you to the right direction. So I will point you where you need to go, of course. Naple.net, check them out. If you think about becoming an organizer, you're already an organizer and didn't know about them. They have courses, they have people, there's an LA chapter also here. We, don't have a, we know folks from the LA chapter, of course. Um, there, it's a great community of people. I, I learned so much from the women that are in, the, in, the, in Naple. I've, I've had eight presidents on the show. So you can watch any of my episodes and see any of them talk about what organizing is about and what and everything. It's just, it's a great organization. So check them out. Also, um, I'm James Law Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Law Jr. is sold at James Law Jr. and all social media platforms and on TikTok too. Yeah, I'm on TikTok also. Um, and we will see you next time. <laughs>